Hello, my friends, and welcome to another episode of Powder Actuated Rapid Onset Lead Poisoning Devices. Today, we are talking about a que- I've been getting, I got a ton of questions, and it's all about cleaning, right? Everybody wants to know, what's the proper, how do we clean properly? What do we use? What am I supposed to use? How do I do it? Okay, so let's just put some of these things to rest. Now, I'm going to be using, the whole thing is, is that there is no clear answer because every single, every single platform, every single product, this happens to be a CZ product, this is a CZ 97, 97B, um, every single product is going to have sort of its own quirks, its own ways that it comes apart, its way, things that need to be lubricated, things that don't need to be lubricated. So today, I'm going to use this 97B as an example only because this sort of features some things that are gonna show up on uh, auto-loading handguns. And I feel like a lot of people, auto-loading handguns are gonna have like a lot of moving parts, et cetera, et cetera. I just thought it was a good good example to use. So let's start by sort of taking this apart um, and uh, and, kind of going, I'm just, this this could be an overview of cleaning, okay? We've got a bunch of cleaning products on the table, a bunch of ideas, ways that we can go about doing this. So right now we're gonna do a quick safety check, make sure that this thing is empty. Got nothing in this magazine, that's empty. And we are unloaded and clear. So to take this particular gun apart, uh, this has got a cross pin that holds the slide to the frame. All we're gonna do is we're gonna index it. There's a little line right there. We can index it on. I actually really like to use a rubber a rubber mallet for this just because it works. It gets that thing out of there. And now we can take the slide off. Immediately when I take this slide off, what we can see is that this hammer is back. It's ready to fall. All I have to do is pull that trigger. If I pull that trigger by accident, guess what? That's gonna run right into our fire control group. As soon as I take that slide off, safety goes on that way i can't break my stuff okay so we're going to come back to that we're going to get that in a second right now we're going to look at this slide okay i made a couple of uh, recoil rods for these um these things are actually uh, a couple of people a couple of two people messaged me about buying them and i've actually sold a few so uh, i'm pretty happy about it so we're gonna we're keeping that going so if you need a uh, recoil guide rod for a 97 look no further give me a call i'll make one for you i can make them out of uh i can make them out of aluminum uh aluminum and brass uh anyway so we're gonna get here I'm gonna our barrel this features a barrel bushing this barrel bushing is actually threaded unlike a 1911 where it's just indexed a little barrel barrel bushing and our barrel now as far as field stripping goes that's it this one's done right let's bring this thing down in a little bit closer <clears throat> okay so when we zoom in here we can see that we've got our got a barrel right got a barrel down here we're chambered 45 auto and we've got our slide now we don't really have a whole lot of moving parts inside of this slide what we do have is we on this particular gun we've got a loaded cha- loaded chamber Im- indicator here so this thing's going to pop up when there's a round in there and we've got um we've got our extractor uh extractor slash ejector here um and that's and we've got a firing pin obviously in the back now we want to make sure that those things are lubricated and that they're moving freely but with the barrel this is where we're going to find a lot of carbon buildup so if we zoom in if we zoom in here and i'm going to sharpen up this focus i'm going to use this nice bright orange backdrop what we can see is that we've got some carbon buildup down here towards the bottom but when we look at this barrel we can see this rifling grooves we can sort of see this stick right here right right there we can see some carbon buildup now this this barrel does not have a lot of this is not a high mileage gun this barrel's got uh, i don't know 50 60 rounds something like that through it so it's a box of ammo pretty much is all that's been put through this thing um so what we want to do is we want to get that rifling nice and clean um using an abrasive is fine what we want to do is use an, is use an abrasive that is softer than steel right 
So any of the any of the uh, carbon buildup and material that's in there, we want to use something that's going to get it out. This is a bore brush. Okay, these are all these these bristles are copper. Okay, so the copper obviously is light is is. Uh, you know, not as hard as steel, so it's not going to hurt the steel, but it's going to take out anything else that's in there out of it. Now, I is what works for me. I will swab this down with whatever solvent I plan on using. Usually, it's uh, you. I actually make my own. I actually make my own solvent with a little uh, ATF uh, mineral spirits and. Um, ATF mineral spirits and uh, um, uh, kerosene, uh, uh, super clean kerosene. But with that, I can dip this thing right in there, swab this barrel with it, and we'll be good to go. We'll get it nice and clean. So moving on to things that are inside of here, the something I wanted to talk about was making sure that we don't we don't need to throw oil everywhere. Right, right here we've got this. Uh, this is half number nine, but it comes with this really cool little tiny little needle syringe. And this is going to allow us to place oil into a very, very specific location to make sure that all that those small moving parts are lubricated. Now, oh, Mitch, I don't have one of these, you know, I don't have one of these, uh, one of these nice little things. It's okay. You don't need, you don't need to buy this specifically. Okay. If you need to run a drop of oil on something and you don't have a, 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 a small needle in order to do it or a, a to syringe or syringe type of oiler what you can use is something it's just use an awl right so here we have an awl it's a hardened it's got a hardened metal tip on it right you can actually see where it has some orange paint still left over that orange paint is because i was using this i was using this to i dabbed paint on the top and then let the drip run down the edge of the awl and onto and onto what exactly where i wanted it to go you can do that with a screwdriver you put a little bit of you put some oil on the end of the screwdriver tip the screwdriver up that oil is going to run right down and off the end of the screwdriver it allows you to drop any oil any kind of lubricant exactly where you want it to go and that includes you can use that trick on fire uh, uh, all over the place here if you if you've got a, a recalcitrant screw that doesn't want to come on screw you can use a drop of oil in order to uh, in order to get it and get it out of uh, and get it into or get it out of that area. But pretty much anything that's got moving parts, any two surfaces that interface, we want that to have a nice light coating, a nice light light coating of lubricant. Now, some a lot of lubricants are going to be completely different. We've got two different kinds of gun oil here. We've got a Lucas product and we've got a Hops product. That's fine. Uh, those are two different kinds of gun oil. We have some Rem oil here. Rem oil is different. Rem oil does contain a um, a detergent. Rem oil has a detergent in it. So it's important to keep that in mind. If we're going to hose this thing down with rem oil, what we want to know is that we've got a detergent in there, which is going to help break some stuff down, which is going to help break that carbon down over time. It's not a straight lube. So, which is, it's good to use. However, it's going to require, it's going to require more cleaning on aggregate, it will require more cleaning because you're going to have to get in there and, and pull that and pull that stuff out. <clears throat> uh, same thing with something like ballastol. Ballastol has got a, a very strong. Uh, it's got a very strong. Uh, 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 detergent in there. I actually use this recipe. I use a, a ballastol recipe uh, inside of the ultrasonic cleaner. A uh, ten to one ballastol to water. Uh, the cool part is that when you when you've got ballastol inside an ultrasonic cleaner, there's a film of oil that sits on the top of the water so when you pull the part out when you pick the part out of there it actually gets coated with a uh, water displacing oil so essentially you're getting you're removing all the all the water and uh, detergent as you pull it out of the piece but when we get down here this is this is kind of where the metal meets the road right here um <laughs> mixing up my proverbs so let's zoom in so what we can see is we can see, we'll get a couple of these other parts out of the way so we have a nice clear green backdrop. But what we can see here is that this is our fire, this is a fire control group. So what we've got here, this is actually our, um, our ejector. So when the casing comes back, when the slide reciprocates, the casing's gonna bounce into that ejector. And then, um, and then uh, this extractor is gonna fling it off, uh, fling it off into a low earth orbit. But 
there's um there's a bunch of different methods now we can see we've got a lot of different things going on here right we've got a floating sear we've got a bunch of springs we got a whole lot of moving parts we've got a uh we've got a, a trigger harp that's sitting here right uh, mind you safety is still engaged. I do not want to drop this hammer because that hammer is going to fall right there. And I'm telling you right now, with the CZ97, you you can do that about three times before you absolutely destroy this thing. Um, so it's good to keep that in mind. But that this trigger connector, right? We got a lot of a lot of moving parts down here. There's a couple of really scientific ways to go about making sure that you got to making sure that you can get what's in here out and get what needs to get back in back in so if we use a little bit of lubricant and we drop some lubricant down in the top we can drop lubricant down in the top of there and and use a little bit of and and use a little bit of uh, uh of duster of compressed air in order to push some of that material some of that material either out of there if we're in the cleaning process we can clean it out or we can put oil back down in so it's a couple of just this is like i said this isn't necessarily this isn't a recipe right this isn't a recipe for cleaning for hard cleaning this is just an overview of some things to look out for when you're working on this stuff right things to keep in mind this hammer is not supposed to drop on just a, uh, on this it's supposed to fall into a firing pin right uh things like uh okay so we really need to take care of our bore we gotta you know we we gotta use we gotta use the appropriate material inside inside of the bore we got a lot of moving parts here right so Moving parts need to be lubricated. Um, what we don't want to do is we don't want to absolutely soak this thing. We don't want it just dripping in lube. We don't want lube flying out of it when we're firing it. But um, all of these all of these surfaces that are going to be uh, rubbing onto each other, all every single thing has got to have a little thin film of oil on top of it. So, like I said, I've been getting a lot of questions on this. You guys, uh, you guys will be able to uh, feed, uh, will feed me more questions, I'm sure. But let me know drop it in the comments and let me know what you let me know what you think what you want to see um if you want to see some more stuff about cleaning if you want to uh maybe we'll maybe we'll start getting into um maybe we'll start getting into ultrasonic cleaners and what those what the different recipes there look like but anyway that's uh that's some uh, cleaning tips and tips and tricks i guess but catch you in the next one see ya.